Are you trying to do a portrait in front of a giant pane of glass like this and getting all kinds of crazy reflections? I'm going to tell you how to deal with it on today's episode of... Ask David Bergman! Hey there everybody, welcome back. Here I am, as always, answering your photography questions. If you've got photo questions, you know what to do by now. You go to askdavidbergman.com, submit your photo questions right there on the site. I just might pick your question and answer here on a future show. I'm actually in my hotel room here in Las Vegas, Nevada, getting ready to shoot the big Luke Combs show at the arena. We only have two shows left, kind of crazy, and then we're done for the year. But I've got a great question that's relevant to where I am today, and it comes from Maurice E., and he wants to know, how can I shoot against a glass window with flash to capture the nighttime city line without getting the flash reflection in the image? Maurice, thanks so much for asking that question. It's a great one. Like I said, I'm here in my hotel room and I've got this giant pane of glass. You can kind of see the Las Vegas Strip out there and I've got some nice lighting. If I were to do a portrait in this situation, it would be really challenging because this giant piece of glass reflects every piece of light. And I'm gonna use flash to make a picture like this because I really wanna increase the quality of the light. To do this video, I'm just using the hotel room lights, the ambient light that's in the room, and they're not ideal, they're very dim. I've got my ISO cranked up pretty high, and the direction is not really that good. It's not ideal lighting, it's fine for the video, but for a portrait, I really wanna work it better and create some really pretty lighting with flash. So when I've got a flash happening, and I've got all this other light bouncing around, that window is gonna be a nightmare. So if I just put the flash in a position that I would normally make a picture, right? So maybe 30, 40 degrees off camera, maybe almost 40 degrees off camera to the side. I'm using, by the way, my Flashpoint Evolve 200 um, little pocket flash. It's, it's about the size of a speed light, but it's gonna give me a lot more power. It's at the 200 watt second power. It's really easy to travel with, so that's what I'm using. I've also got a Glow softbox. It's the two by three softbox, so that's my system that I really like to travel with. It's all that and one light stand, and I can make a portrait pretty much anywhere. So. I'm gonna use that flash, and when I put it about 45 degrees off camera, you can see I'm getting a big, giant reflection in that background. So let's work through the process. I'm gonna do a few things here to make it look better. The first thing is, we're seeing all of the room light, all of the light from the room, the ambient light reflecting off that glass. You can see things all the way in the background. There's the bed and the, and the door back there and all kinds of things you really don't wanna see in that, back, in that window light, right? And coming off of that window pane. So the first thing I wanna do is kill all of the room lights. I'm gonna make it pitch black in this room, turn off everything, and then when I make the picture, you can see that ambient light is all gone now. So all I'm seeing is that giant flash that we still have to work on. But that's the first thing you wanna do is eliminate as much ambient light, give yourself a break, and try to eliminate as much of that as possible. Now, the other thing I wanna do here is I really wanna make those city lights look better. You really can't see them at the exposure that I was shooting at. So, if you don't remember learning this, Basically, the aperture controls the power from the light and your shutter speed controls your ambient light. So by changing my shutter speed, by slowing down my shutter speed, I can increase the value, how much light I'm getting from that background without affecting my flash exposure. So I'm gonna drop my shutter speed all the way down to two seconds. That's a crazy long exposure, but the flash because it's a fast flash duration, that is gonna freeze me when I make that picture, but the long exposure is gonna bring in more of that city light. So that's gonna give me a much better looking background. If I've got a beautiful cityscape back there, I really need to slow down my shutter speed. Now I'm also shooting on a tripod, so I really don't have to worry about motion. It'd be hard to do that handheld, obviously at two seconds, but in this case, it actually works really, really well. So now we have to get that light, that flash, out of the frame. So really, what we're looking at here is all about the angles. Remember angle of incidence, right? So if you're seeing that flash in your shot, if you're seeing the flash when you're setting it up, if you can see that reflection, of course you're gonna see it when you take the picture. And basically, it's just a straight bounce, and if that angle is too narrow, you're gonna see that flash in your picture. So the first thing I'm going to try to do is move that flash all the way over as far as I can so it's out of the frame. Simply enough, just moving it over right or left. In this case, I'm going to go all the way over there and I'm going to put it off to the side and I'm also going to angle it. I'm going to feather that light. Instead of having it hit me directly, I'm going to try to turn it so it's basically now going sort of in front of me a little bit and that light is just feathering off and hitting me. Now, it does change the quality of the light in my portrait, of course, but it's a give and take, right? That's one of the ways, one of the things we have to do to get rid of that light. 
So it does work in this case if I get it all the way over. It just may or may not be the look that you want. So the other things we can do to change that angle of incidence, I could try if I move it back where I had it and then I can raise it up, I could raise that light up to try to get it out of that frame, out of that glass. If you go up high enough, it will actually disappear. Again, it may or may not be the look that you want, but in this case, it does work. The other thing you can do if you want to leave the light where it is, you can actually raise the camera up and shoot down on me instead of shooting straight at me. And that way, you're again changing that angle of incidence and that is gonna help you to get rid of that light and get it out of that piece of glass. The other thing you can do is actually move the camera to a completely different position. Instead of shooting so that the sensor, the camera sensor, is parallel to that piece of glass, if you move it over and shoot at more of an angle, you're gonna give yourself better options. And then putting that light over to the side, I can now have it hit me directly and by shooting at that angle, I can still keep it out of that glass because that angle of incidence has been increased, so that light is gonna be further over there. So those four things are really things you can do to try to change that angle of incidence and keep that light out of your frame. Now, if none of those work, there are some other options. You could try to have your subject actually block the reflection of that light. It doesn't work in this picture really because just the way that the angle that I've got it at, but if you were shooting an event for example, and you were everybody, everybody was up against glass, you could actually try to angle it so that those people, your subject is actually blocking the reflection from that glass. It can be a little tricky, especially in a situation where it's moving around, but that certainly is one option. You also could move the camera back and zoom in more, use a longer lens and zoom in more to change that field of view, to really narrow the field of view. If the flash if, if it's just the reflection is just out of the side of the frame and you narrow that field of view, you could potentially get rid of it that way. It changes your field of view, it changes your image, but it is another way to do it. Uh, I know some photographers like to use polarizing filters. Uh, I'm not a big fan. They're a little tricky to work with and you're probably not gonna get rid of the entire flash. It's gonna be a little challenging to do that, but it is certainly one more option that you could do. And lastly, really probably the best thing, if you don't mind doing some post-processing in the computer for a portrait, I don't mind doing that. If it's something that it's really important and I wanna spend the time to do it, you could shoot the one picture exactly how you want it. You can have the flash, and you know, obviously in that background, have it where you want it, and then shoot another frame, turn the flash off, and shoot another frame with just that ambient light. And then you can combine those two in post-processing to completely clean that background and get rid of that flash. That certainly is a way to do it. Again, it's more time in post-processing. If you have hundreds of images, I don't know that I would do it, but for one portrait, if it's something you really wanna do, that's a definitely a way to go. So Maurice, those are your options. I think those are the best ways to go. What do you guys think? Do you have another uh, uh, possible scenario where you could fix this? How could we do it? Another solution that might help? Let me know in the comments down below. I look forward to hearing those. Remember, I'm back here every Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern with a brand new question. I hope you're already a subscriber to the Adorama YouTube channel. If not, go ahead and click that button down below. Use the bell icon. You'll be notified as soon as new photo shows come out all week long. I hope to see you back here next week. Come on back right here on Ask David Burton.